Hey, Carol. Carol, is that you? Uh, hi. Yes, that's me. Can you hear me? Can't hear you. Have you? You're unmuted. It says audio. Can you we can hear, hear Carol. We can hear you, okay. Carol. Okay. Yours okay. is not working. They must be having a problem with their speakers. Or whatever that does, because it was must. I've never done anything. I've never te test. Welcome to the Florida Botanical Gardens. My name is Emily Bloxham. I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation. The Florida Botanical Gardens is a 100-acre park owned and operated by Pinellas County. Day-to-day -day management and operations fall to the Pinellas County Parks and Conservation Resources Department, while education, fundraising, and events in the garden are done through the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation. The foundation was formed in 2003 
and is managed by an all-volunteer board of directors who strive to make the gardens a place for everyone to enjoy. The foundation raises funds to support the gardens through memberships, donations, events, sponsorships, memorials, and the Botanical Bounty gift shop. All proceeds raised go directly back to the garden to fulfill our mission to create, sustain, and grow a world-class botanical garden. The latest project the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation is undertaking is a brand new children's garden on site. It'll be a two plus acre garden in addition to the existing landscape. Just to the right of me is the location for the brand new outdoor classroom. Uh, it'll be a space for kids to have educational classes, programming, um, an outdoor potting area, all kinds of fun activities, as well as you know a rental space for children's birthday parties, events. On the left hand side will be the pollinator landing, an outdoor play area and stage, um, which leads to the bamboo bridge um, right through this stand of bamboo. And then uh, the music forest where there'll be musical instruments, uh, large ones for kids to play on and have a lot of fun with. We are currently fundraising for this project, so all proceeds and donations go towards the children's garden. We're really close to our goal, so we're excited to break ground um, soon and get that project underway. The Florida Botanical Gardens is open to the public 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, free admission and leashed pets welcome. We invite you to come out and enjoy our beautiful botanical oasis in the heart of Pinellas County. Welcome everyone to our annual meeting. This is a great time for us to bring everybody up to date on where we are and what we're doing and uh, to give you all the exciting news about what we've done in, uh, in the past. So I want to start off tonight. I'm, by the way, I'm Vernon Bryant. I'm the executive director for the foundation. And I just wanted to, um, we're, uh, every year we, um, um, designate someone as our volunteer of the year. So let me read a little something for you. Volunteers are the lifeblood of the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation, and we would not be able to accomplish any of the many great things we do in the garden without them. This includes our incredible, incredible board, our gift shop clerks, our holiday lights crew, and many others. The gardens also benefit greatly from the volunteers who regularly volunteer and work in the landscape. We determined a few years ago that we would look out among this phenomenal group and select one person each year to honor. One of, the, one of those volunteer, volunteers who we thought has gone far beyond what we could have dreamed or imagined in, um, and in what they have given to the garden and to the foundation. So it is my honor to introduce our 2022 Volunteer of the Year in the person of Corinne Arnold. She was born a Texan and moved to Tampa with her family when she was a toddler. She holds dear her father who was killed in the line of duty while serving in the U.S. Air Force. Corinne states that she started growing plants and orchids when she was only eight years old. She is a graduate of Robinson High School in Tampa. She attended what was then St. Pete Junior College, earning an AE degree there, going on to earn a BA in Social Studies Secondary Education from the uh, University of South Florida. She met her husband, Paul, at school, and they married a few short years later. Their early years had them living in Gainesville, where she strengthened her gardening prowess by taking adult cl ed, ed classes on gardening, vegetable gardening, bonsai, orchids, terrariums, succulents and cactus, African violets, and other gasnariates, uh, growing things under lights, container gardening, and landscape. When they moved to their present home in Clearwater, she became 
a member of the Florida West Coast Orchid Society for a couple of years. But the kids came along, so she took a little time to nurture and grow them instead into adulthood. Thanks to her family, that includes her son, Fire Captain Peter, wife, his wife Beth and their granddaughters Emma and Harper, daughters Joan and her hubby Anthony, and daughter Sarah for loving Corinne and her plants and lending her to us to, as a volunteer. Corinne returned to the Orchid Society in 2001 and has been an active and integral member ever since. She has been an important player in helping us to build the strong relationship between the, the West Coast Orchid Society and the foundation. She is the one of the, which is the first reason we selected her as our 2022 Volunteer of the Year. In addition to her work with the Florida West Coast Orchid Society and our partnership, she is one of the foundation's most reliable and engaged volunteers. She has volunteered for the Botanical Garden for a number of years and continually works to get, get other members of the Florida West Coast Orchid Society to volunteer alongside her. Her many volunteer projects with the garden and foundation include repotting the Botanical Garden's orchids and other plants, participating in landscape projects around the garden, always helping at holiday lights in the garden, she has served as co-chair of the gift and plant sale for the last three years, served as our hostess for our annual tour of public and private gardens. She's been one of our hosts uh, at Pumpkin Fest, and she's helped with tours. She's manned, helped us man the tent at, at, at our mini garden pop-ups and is always helping with the tedious prep for the holiday lights because she's personally tested lots of lights. She is also willing to serve anywhere and at any time that there is a need. In addition to her wonderful volunteer heart, she is also an excellent plant person. She readily admits, I have always had plants and they are an integral part of my life and sanity. So Corinne, we say thank you for all that you do for the Florida Botanical Gardens, the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation, the Florida West Coast Orca Society. And because of that, you are well deserving of our recognition as the 2022 Volunteer of the Year. And we give you an applaud. And so uh, I believe Corinne is on. And uh, Corinne, do you have any words you want to give us um, before you have to scoot out to do your work with the Orchid Society? Yes. Um, as a family, we always volunteered. Um, if you believe in something, if you care about something, you want to give your time and your talent. So we believe in the Botanical Garden. Uh, you know, uh, we, as we raised our kids, it was scouts, it was school, it was church, it was sports, it was driving here you know, selling there, all those things make something. We cared about what our kids were doing. I care about, we care about with our botanical garden. So we volunteer to keep it going. That's the only way we, we me and our family can make sure things succeed is by volunteering. So we thank you very much. It was a very big surprise. <laughs> 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 it surely was, but thank you very much for anyway. It's always good to have your being recognized by your peers. Thank you. Thank you again, Corinne. And as we continue our annual meeting, uh, we're going to turn this uh, over to Emily for the next part. Thank you. So I'll move into just a recap of fiscal year 2021. Um, as we scaled back our events in fiscal year 2021, um, our goal was to adhere to COVID-19 protocols um, with outdoor events at a max capacity. Uh, this allowed us to hold several of our signature events as we moved into 2021. Um, our rescheduled tour of public and private gardens fell in October of 2020 and the pumpkin fest on its regular weekend just before Halloween. The annual gift and plant sale has been a staple event and um, has seen an increase in revenue and attendance each winter. Although we made the difficult decision um, not to host holiday lights in the gardens in 2020, our lovely volunteers still decorated the gardens with holiday cheer 
and guests truly enjoyed uh, this festive feeling that we bring. Um, we saw a multitude of couples and families uh, capturing their moments in the gardens, their memories, um, as it's the perfect backdrop for a holiday card. Um, through our partnerships with the Florida Farm Bureau, FNGLA, the Florida West Coast Orchid Society, um, the Professional Association of Visual Artists, Creative Pinellas, Heritage Village, and more, we've been able to bring uh, programming to the botanical gardens that's in line with our new mission. This new mission for our organization is a result of the hard work from our strategic plan ad hoc committee. Um, throughout 2021, this volunteer committee met regularly to determine the goals and initiatives for the foundation in the coming years. And um, Vernon will speak more on this later. Um, but as we close out fiscal year 21, we have seen a great progression in our agreements, specifically between Pinellas County and the Majid Foundation. Um, we are so grateful for their commitment to the new project of the Majid Discovery Garden, which will be a space for children to learn and explore. Uh, the garden's namesake comes from the Majid Foundation, uh, and a generous donation from the Berelsheimer Foundation will be commemorated on the prospective outdoor classroom. I'm going to turn it over to John now to talk a little bit more about our landscape maintenance volunteers and botanical bounty gift shop. I think you're muted, John. Sorry. Thank you, Emily. Uh, I'm John Thomas. I have the pleasure of serving as the president of the foundation and uh, looking at uh, some of the other items uh, that uh, we were able to uh, basically reclaim from uh, the COVID issues was the return of our landscape maintenance volunteers back in October, 2020. And uh, we were able to open up our botanical bounty gift shop. Uh, it was reopened in 2021 in June. And most importantly, those who were uh, checked in early for this meeting, they have seen Carol uh, <laughs> uh, off on the side of the screen. Uh, Carol's been doing a fabulous job uh, as our guest experience manager, which includes chairing our membership committee and running our gift shop. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen Carol uh, and during your visits to the gardens and um, the gift shop itself. So moving on to uh, where we are in looking at uh, fiscal year uh, 2022. The major item with uh, 2022 was actually the ability to run holiday lights again. And it was such a spectacular uh, display of the lights. Uh, I think Vernon Bryant lived that uh, event for, well, he's still living it in the lighthouse uh, for those who know Vernon. It's not done yet, but uh, the amount of time and energy and creativity he brought uh, to this display uh, was just phenomenal. Uh, besides Vernon, we had so many volunteers, uh, folks from Habitat for Humanity, people from the community, foundation members and board members uh, all contributed along with the entertainers and some of our regular performers uh, to make it a, a, just a wonderful event. We um, did uh, monitor in some ways uh, our attendance and it's been estimated we had about 60,000 attendees uh, this year. As opposed to previous years, we had close to 90,000 uh, in some, one of the peak years. Uh, probably COVID, and for some, perhaps, they requested $10 donation, kept folks away. Uh, we did have a few comments about the $10 requested donation. 
but uh, I think there were actually a lot more people giving more than the $10. Yeah. Um, so uh, at least those are the reports that I've received. Uh, besides uh, the community's enjoyment, this event really is the foundation for the Botanical Gardens Foundation operating revenues. And we're fortunate that we're able to net about three hundred thousand uh, dollars from this event, after all the the costs. So, a great success, and uh, thank you to all who contributed in so many different ways, from sponsorships to uh, just participation or even just attendance. So, uh, moving on to some of our projects. Uh, we have been evaluating the renovation of the tropical pavilion at the, uh, the gardens near the restrooms uh, to convert that to our gift shop and our offices for the foundation. We would find that uh, having a presence directly in the middle of the garden would be a real benefit, particularly for engaging uh, the, the visitors. Uh, we're fortunate that uh, the county uh, has uh, indicated that they would provide us $100,000 uh, to this uh, project. But uh, just recently, we received our construction cost estimate uh, based on the plans that uh, we have uh, been issued a building permit for. The, the estimates were frankly shocking. And that's what's happening with construction costs. And uh, we're presently working uh, to find ways to reduce costs uh, with some design changes and uh, stand hopeful that we will be able to proceed uh, with construction of this project uh, very soon. Moving on to our uh, major project, the Majid Discovery Garden. Uh, there are some signs of progress, actually physical ones uh, that you might see if you visit the gardens at the north entry to the, uh, to the gardens. Uh, we have the signage that's been installed that is shown here on the screen, uh, the Majid Discovery Garden. And these actually serve to screen and keep children away from electrical panels that uh, were present uh, right behind that uh, uh, two big doors that would open to allow workers to uh, tend to the electrical panels. The other element that uh, you might see is the rain keep sculpture that's in the McKay Creek Plaza at the present time that will be relocated uh, within the Florida Friendly Landscape Area uh, at the G Discovery Garden. It will be proximate to the Roots and Shoots area, uh, an outdoor uh, classroom as well, where children can uh, collect the water and use it to uh, water plants that they may be potting in the, the potting area. The other progress uh, has been ongoing for a long time and that's obtaining the permits to be able to commence construction of the project. We're already well over a year uh, into the process of when we first submitted our permit applications to Pinellas County and the Southwest Florida Management District and Florida DEP. Uh, we have had the good fortune that Pinellas County uh, issued us a site plan approval in December of 2021. And the Southwest Florida Water Management District uh, issued their uh, wetlands permit shortly thereafter. We are waiting for Florida DEP basically to rubber stamp the wetlands permit. Uh, Florida DEP is the only state in the country that has taken over the Army Corps of Engineers wetland permit program that was created under the Federal Clean Water Act. And uh, I think they found that 
they just don't have the staff to deal with the number of applications. And it's not just our garden. We're hearing from our consultants and other construction folks that it's taking a long time uh, for processing permits. Uh, it actually took us six months to uh, get a rescheduled site visit to confirm our wetland boundary. And that's been a major portion of the delay uh, in the project. So we're hoping that uh, the staff can attend to our permit and issue it uh, forthwith. As these delays in the project uh, unfolded, uh, construction co costs just overall in any industry uh, have exploded. And uh, construction costs are going to dictate how much of the permitted program we'll actually be able to build. And we're working to determine you know, what we can afford. And uh, there are signs that some of the construction costs with you know, lumber and some of the materials uh, have come down a little bit, but uh, perhaps not to pre-COVID levels. The construction that we plan to undertake uh, will be focusing on all the site infrastructure, which is the walkways, the utilities, the construction of a pond, uh, other items to meet engineering requirements, the signage, all the plant material. What all that does is provide us the infrastructure. To serve the full needs of the project, uh, we're really going to focus on the education program elements. Key, the outdoor classroom building that you may have noted in one of the earlier slides. The roots and shoots area where children will be uh, learning about how to plant uh, seeds, grow, grow plants, and um, learn about uh, the growth and different types of plants. The music forest, uh, another cultural as element, will be part of the major uh, elements that we will be, we'll be able to build. The Florida friendly landscape area and its uh, multicultural signage in both English and Spanish. The art line where children will be able to hang their works of art in a display area uh, outside the, the classroom building. We have had the good fortune also of uh, a donor sponsoring a sensory garden. It's one of the value engineering items on this exhibit plan that's on the screen. You might note a leaf hammock and art mound. Well, those two play features have disappeared from that particular rendering and are now uh, the location of a sensory garden that will uh, be has been designed to uh, provide all the signage and braille plant materials that uh, would be more suited to the experience of people who are blind, as well as what we have heard autistic children would enjoy that particular garden as well. Another exciting element uh, that we're hoping to include in the, this phase of construction will be the pollinator landing uh, stage and climbing structure that uh, has, serves a whole variety of purposes. Overall, you know, we're trying to fulfill our goal, which is to bring children and their families to explore the outdoors in a learning environment. Uh, we are also hoping to be able to hire a full-time educator to run the programs at this you know, facility. Overall, uh, this project will fulfill a gap that was identified in the master plan process that we commenced back in 2018. That's how long it takes to get things uh, through the process, commence the designs, obtain the permits, and uh, it's been a long process, but we're so very close, just this last permit and uh, we'll be able to move forward uh, with uh, construction. So hopefully by year end, visitors 
to this garden will be able to hear the shrieks of joy and the peals of laughter as children experience this outdoor education center with their families. So thank you. I think that's uh, really the, the work of the foundation. Um, besides what Vernon is going to uh, communicate and outline about uh, our strategic plan and uh, how that uh, fits into what we're doing with the Majid Discovery Garden, our hopes for the renovation of the Tropical Pavilion, and uh, how we hope to be a bigger part of the Pinellas County community, as well as an attraction for the tourists and visitors that come here from all over the world. If you're ever out in the gardens, take a look at the log book. It sits over by the restrooms. It's, it's quite a refreshing uh, for those who uh, have volunteered and participate here at the gardens to see uh, how this facility in County Park is appreciated. So I thank you all and thank you for allowing me the pleasure of serving as the president for the foundation. Well, now I have a fiscal report from um, our finance committee. Okay, um, as was said before, unfortunately, we were not able to have holiday lights in 2020, um, but we did have some other income, not as much as we would have liked, um, as our events, our other events were also curtailed. Um, we st fortunately, we had money in reserve that we were able to continue to function through the pandemic, um, paying salaries and whatever other operating expenses that we had. Um, and we um, unfortunately ended up with a loss of $92,000 for the year. Um, but we fortunately had a very successful holiday lights in 2021. So we were able to at least replace the money that we had lost during that last fiscal year. Um, we, as of September 30th, we had $1.3 million in assets. Um, a good part of that is from donations towards our children's garden. Um, and hopefully we will be able to do everything we wanna do. Thank you. Thanks, Martha, for uh, that. Um, one thing I would mention as we are um, proceeding here, if you do have questions and you want to put them in the chat, we will get to them. Uh, we'll also reserve a little bit of time toward the end if there's uh, if people have uh, questions as well. So um, another important part of the work that we accomplished during the fiscal year 2021, and again, this year started uh, October 1, 2020, and run, ran through September 31, 2021. And um, so, you know, we're looking back at all the great work. And I really have to commend our board uh, for the work that they took on during that year, because in spite of COVID and having to do many, many things virtually, I do firmly believe that we kept the organization moving forward. And again, that's really a tribute to our board of directors under John's leadership. And um, the other thing I would also want to mention is that um, we have two board officers that are going, that went off at the end of September um, of last year. That includes Dan Beaver, who had served as our treasurer for a number of years, very efficiently and very effectively. So I want to make sure we acknowledge Dan um, and his, um, his work as the treasurer. And then also Margaret Stiglitz served as our, tr our secretary for um, a period of time. And she, be, you know, due to other things going on, had to uh, leave 
her position as secretary of the board. But that meant that we were able to encourage and, and, and invite and now acknowledge our two newest board uh, officers. And that is in the person of Mary Sweeney, who is our board secretary, and Martha Vorab, who is now our treasurer. So um, they are you know, working hard to learn the job and all the nuances thereof and kind of got sucked into this job during a, a crazy holiday light season. So I, but I do want to recognize their beginning work and know that they will continue to do an excellent job. So we want to thank them. And again, we want to applaud both Dan and Margaret for all the work that they did during the fiscal year that ended September 20, uh, 31, 2021. So the thing that I am supposed to do is to talk about the other thing that we accomplished in 2021. And that was we went back and redid our strategic plan. We had done a strategic plan a number of years ago and it was time to refresh that. And so uh, together came a group of people which included Lisa Lombardi, Allison Norris Miller, Dan Beaver, our president John Thomas, myself, and Emily Bloxham, our communications coordinator, and a very special friend, Kira Barrera from the Pinellas Sierra Club, who came together to help us craft and draft a new strategic plan, an updated strategic plan. And one of the first things that came out of that work is a revision of our mission statement. So Emily, so our mission, the, the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation is committed to creating an environment at the Florida Botanical Gardens for the community to come together for education, inspiration, and enjoyment. We hope that you all will grasp this new mission statement and help us to run with it because it is meant for us to, uh, to inspire us, which a mission should do, to bigger and better things. And so as we crafted that mission statement and uh, had lots of comments about it, it really was about the fact that um, over the last several years, we have also really worked diligently to solidify our relationships with Pinellas County Parks and Conservation Resources Department. And we understand that the Pinellas County Parks and Conservation Resources Department is responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the gardens. And then we, as the Florida Botanical Gardens Foundation, come to help them really make and keep this garden a true botanical gem, a real place, uh, a, a place of oasis, a place of peace and inspiration and lovely and pretty and all those kind of adjectives is what we bring at, to the work that we're working on with the Florida Botanical, with the, I'm sorry, with the Parks and Conservation Resources Department. And so as our mission looks at that, we understand a little bit better what our role is with the, uh, with the Parks Department. So in the mission statement, as we kind of then went further, we wanted to make sure that we looked at how do we make this a reality? Because, you know, it's one thing to have a mission, but you have to think about what it really entails. And so out of that became five position statements that we wanted to um, always keep in our minds as we work with the foundation and with the things that we're doing. And so I'm not gonna read this to you, but I wanted you to kind of know what they are. Enhance, grow, educate, engage, and advocate. So generally, again, we are here to help enhance the garden. It, it goes beyond just the physical plants that are in the garden and the landscape itself. It's all about the other things that make this place a garden. So that is one of the things that we are going to be working for and working toward in the coming years. Another part of that is to grow. We don't want to keep this garden a, unfortunately, a hidden, a well hidden secret, uh, according to some people. But we want to do things to first and foremost diversify and increase the garden's attendance. We want to increase our foundation membership because that's a great place for us to have volunteers and for part of our uh, ongoing revenue for operations. 
we are working hard to continue to improve our community connections. And of course, we've got to get uh, money in the door if we want to continue to do great things for the garden. Another thing is that we wanted to educate. And that's always been a very vital part of what the garden is about. And so the foundation, our major role is to think about that. And that goes from everything from programming to signage to um, our website and how we get people to interact and uh, in, in, in the garden and even away from the garden. So our goal is to really up ramp up, ramp up our educational programming and ed educational opportunities in the garden. Because again, at the very beginning of the, uh, the creation of the garden, it was always about education. Another one again is for us to engage. We want to engage people in a way that really, uh, what's the word? I think, you know, just gets them engaged. I think if you go back to what Corinne said at the very beginning about plants and sanity, I think that as we engage people, that we're helping them to uh, find a place where they can find a peace that oftentimes eludes folks. During the early days of the COVID pandemic, we saw a huge increase in the number of people that came to the garden when there was nowhere else to go, just because it was a place of respite. And so we understand that, and we're going to continue to work toward that to make sure that we have a great place that will engage people and give them a, a spirit and a place of peace and, and understanding and all those great things. And then the last thing that we added you know uh, in this time around was the fact that we as the foundation have to be the garden's best strongest loudest biggest advocates we are the ones that are going to make the garden uh, make people stand up and notice the garden we are the ones that are going to help make sure that the county commission and all the other folks never neglect this garden we are the folks that are, that are going to come together to do all that we can to nurture this garden for years to come. And so what we're doing now is really, again, setting a foundation off, off of which we, we will want all of our future boards and organizations to uh, collaborators to work with us toward. So advocate is that last position statement. So as we do this, of course, we have a number of uh, now um, goals that we're going to be setting forward. And, you know, one of those or two of those we've talked about um, that includes building the Children's Discovery, the, I'm sorry, the Majid Discovery Garden. I have to always click my mind over. And then it's also about us creating that welcome center over in the tropical uh, courtyard, which will be our new gift shop and offices right smack in the heart of the gardens. So we are encouraged by our mission statement and we are going to be continuing to do work toward it. I would even say to you that as we think about what our needs are, a big chunk of that is that we want people to volunteer with us, not necessarily always to do physical things, but we also need to use your minds. And so if you are interested in working on some of these things, like our uh, putting our putting the meat on the bones of our uh, strategic plan, we would love to include you in that uh, opportunity to do that. And, and as well, we are looking to continue to strengthen our board and to also think about the future of this organization. We want to include a diversity of people on the board, both age, uh, sex, um, religion, um, race, all those kinds of things, because we know that the more diverse our board is, the more that we'll be able to do in terms of looking at the gardens from very different perspectives. We need educators, we need uh, philanthropists and fundraisers, we need um, folks that are, have a clerical background to help us out. So there's a lot of places that this strategic plan will help us to do and to go forward in this uh, new era for the foundation and for the garden. 2022, 
I believe holds a, a great amount of potential. And the only thing that's holding us back, unfortunately, are things like permits and uh, COVID. But beyond that, we are working very diligently as a board and as the staff to help make sure that things move forward for the Florida Botanical Gardens and for the foundation. So with that, I will actually stop talking and open it up if anyone has questions or comments that they would like to add, this is your opportunity. Vernon, there was one question about uh, visitors coming to the gardens and uh, the, the, the lack of clear signage and the wayfaring uh, system uh, is kind of lacking both, you know, with physical signs in the gardens, as well as maps are pretty yeah. rudimentary. And the Parks Department uh, has a, advised us that they are in the process of undertaking a pretty comprehensive master plan for both the Florida Botanical Gardens and Heritage Village and the old arts complex, which they call the Pinewood Park campus and so they're anticipating and we haven't seen it yet it's still forthcoming it's going to be one of our my questions at our board meeting uh tomorrow to our uh contact at parks uh, is the status of this particular master plan project but reportedly uh the signage is something that is understood to be lacking and will be addressed as part of that plan yeah absolutely you know it uh, just to add to what john is saying you know as we uh did our debrief about the holiday lights one of the things that was was this similar concept is how do we help people to navigate the garden during holiday lights and so uh, we're, we have some ideas, but we also would love to hear ideas about how we can do that and make it easier for people to get in, in and around and feel like they've seen the whole display and you know those kind of things. So yes, it, it's something that's on our mind, on, on our radar. And, uh, but again, it's something that we have to work in collaboration with Pinellas County Parks and Conservation Resources Department. Other questions? Um, so again, thank you all for coming to our annual meeting. And um, it's it's something I want, I want to give uh, commendations to John, who decided uh, at the very beginning of his uh, term as president that we needed to do this as part of what we were supposed to do uh, according to our bylaws. And so this it's been a great opportunity for us to uh, continue to do these annual meetings to get people included in what we're doing and kind of understanding what we've already done. So I appreciate that. Um, on the slide, you do see our current board of directors. And again, I want to thank all of them for uh, their great work. I should also mention that we do have a number of committees um, that do work as well. That includes our marketing committee um, under the le leadership of Jim Shans and Emily, our uh, development committee under the leadership of Lisa Lombardi, our education committee, which is under the leadership of Janet Kotash, and actually includes a number of uh, master gardeners and others our um, membership committee, which is now as uh, under the leadership of Carol Courtright, our guest relations manager, uh, and then our holiday lights committee, which is under my purview uh, for right now. And then we also have a master plan implementation committee, which is under the leadership of um, Peter Shafari. Our nominations committee is under the leadership of Mary Sweeney. Our finance and fiscal and finance committee is under the leadership of our treasurer, Mary Vo Martha Vorab. And I hope I got them all. Did I miss anything, everybody? So if you um, don't want to be on the board, we still need help 
on committees. And so that's also uh, a great place to get exposed and involved with us. And we'd love to have you be part of that. So again, everyone, thank you all for joining us tonight to kind of hear again what we've done and to get a little bit of taste of where we're going. And we will uh, continue to have great uh, communications with you all. I do want to commend Emily for her ongoing work to make sure that we have emails and uh, all of our great publications that come out as part of her work on an ongoing basis with the garden. John? Well said, Vernon. I have nothing further to add other than to reinforce your statement about the fine work that Emily does. Thank you. And thank you guys all for um, joining us. Uh, hopefully this was convenient for everyone to join by Zoom. And uh, we just want to say thank you uh, for your interest in the foundation. And with that, I'll, I'll let you all go. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.